Trump, he, he essentially, his innovation was to recognize from the start that the campaign is just really a bad reality show, and he made it a, a, a good reality show. Now, that's not saying that qualitatively he was a good person. I'm just saying that he, he knew how to make good television. He knew, he knew, to, knew how to attract eyeballs. It's entertainment. If you think about the, the, the financial incentives of everybody who's on the bus or on the campaign plane, you have the candidates who are funded by uh, you know, a very small group of ultra-powerful commercial donors, and then you have the press, and they're there, they're basically funded by advertising dollars. And so there's this, uh, somewhere along the line, there's a synergy between um, the person who is the most entertaining on the one hand and who is able to satisfy the donor class on the other hand. If you find that sweet spot in the middle of those two uh, phenomena, that's usually where you are going to get your candidate, uh, is someone who is a little bit entertaining and also a little bit morally flexible. As a result of that, at the, at the outset of the campaign uh, especially, he was able to attract mountains and, and you know, billions of dollars probably of free coverage um, at a period of the race when other candidates have to buy their own publicity. And he made it into a, a kind of a genuine revolt uh, where his voters um, perceive themselves as kind of the aggrieved victims of a conspiracy of elites that were represented by all the you know the donors, the press, uh, the two parties, and he managed to get past a lot of the, the the kind of the bulwarks that we usually had thrown up in the past to keep him people like that out. Like for instance, um, normally when a candidate slips up and makes a mistake. Uh, a la Howard Dean when he made a scream, or Gary Hart when he got busted with, um, you know, with the monkey business photo. Uh, you know, we typically used to descend upon a candidate. Uh, a reporter I know used to call it the seal of death, um, where you know we would kind of swirl around uh, a candidate with negative attention, and that would really be it. You know, a few hundred times they would show, you know, a damning clip, and the person would just exit the scene. Uh, there'd be a humiliating public apology and then a few a drop in the polls and a few weeks later you wouldn't hear from that candidate again. That didn't happen this time. This uh, Trump managed to survive countless scandals like that and every time everybody expected him to go down in the polls he went up in the polls and um, I think a lot of people in, in our profession were were kind of uh, flummoxed by that. They, he, he was sort of defying the usual laws of gravity and, and we just didn't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm.